Before we start, notice that PowerPoint 2010 recognizes that transitions and animations are different and puts transitions on their own tab. As a result, the animation commands now have room to spread out on the Animations tab, making them much more visible and easier to use. This change reflects the new emphasis on graphic support in PowerPoint 2010. As you can see, this slide has a title and three currency symbols. You want to animate the US dollar symbol. You start by displaying the animation gallery so that you can choose the animation you want. As you can see, the gallery displays ready-made entrance, emphasis, exit, and motion path animations. If you don't see the one you want in the gallery, you can click the commands at the bottom to display more effects. Let's apply the bounce effect. Now let's add another animation to the same object. Notice that each animation is identified by a number adjacent to its object. These identifiers appear only when the Animations tab is active. If the Effect Options button becomes active when you click an identifier, you can click the button to access tools for refining that particular animation. In this case, you don't want to change the animation. Suppose you want to apply the same two animations to the Yen and Euro symbols. You'll be glad to know that you don't have to go through the entire process again. You can simply copy the animations. Because you want to copy the animations to more than one object, you double-click the Animation Painter button instead of simply clicking it. You can then click as many objects as you want before clicking the Animation Painter button again to turn it off. To judge whether this has produced the effect you want, you can preview the entire effect. Now suppose you want each object to bounce onto the slide when you click the mouse button, but you want the growing effect to happen automatically without you having to click. The easiest way to make this refinement is in the animation pane. As you can see, you can customize each animation in this pane. You want to make the Grow Shrink animation occur automatically after the dollar object enters the slide. It's hard to see, but if you look closely, you'll notice that the identifier for animation 2 has disappeared, and the identifier for animation 1 now shows two overlapping boxes, indicating two associated animations. Instead of resetting the other two Grow Shrink animations, you can once again use the Animation Painter to apply the set of animations from the dollar object to the other two objects. Now suppose that you want to talk about the dollar first, then you want to talk about the euro, and finally you will discuss the yen. You can easily change the order of the animations. Notice that the numbers to the left of the objects now show that the yen will appear after the euro. Let's preview that effect. When you preview animations from the animation pane, PowerPoint displays a timeline for each animation. Now you want to experiment with transitions. First, let's close the animation pane and switch to slide sorter view. Notice that slide 2 has an animation symbol because we have applied animations to its objects. Let's pick a 3D effect and apply it to all the slides. Now you want to preview the transition effect in reading view a new PowerPoint 2010 view that shows the presentation as viewers will see it, but without hiding all the navigation tools and access to the notes associated with each slide.
Reading View was developed for the PowerPoint web app, but is so useful that it is now also incorporated into the full program. With a combination of animation and transitions, you can create professional looking presentations with very little effort, but be careful not to overdo it. Too many effects can be distracting. In this demonstration, you have seen how easy it is to animate objects as well as how to quickly apply transitions to slides.